In this video, I'm going to have a quick run through the first two levels of Dimensional, just so that the people who've not managed to play the demo have got a, a feel for what it's like. The room you're in now is your base. This is where you set up the tracking grid on the floor, and it's where you load the levels. Select a level, and let's go. Your first task is to find a droid. We won't get far without him. We're sending a drone in with you. My team will be watching, and may give you some advice from time to time. Look here, rookie. Don't forget. Your body's still back in your own room. So if you want to stay safe, stay on the grid. So you can see the grid on the floor. This is where I'm safe to walk. I've just marked out a very small one. And you'll, you'll notice various little icons where you can walk over to get uh, help and tips. So this one's telling us just how to do a basic teleport. And here we learn that if we teleport near a wall and st try and stick your head through, you dropped to a limbo, and if you stay in there too long, used to move you'll have to reset. Rate. Sometimes you'll need to crouch or lean to see the way forward. So at this stage, we've just got to f find our way ahead. And you can see over here, we've got some light indicating that there's a bit of a gap. So I'm going to teleport down here. Now I'm going to physically actually move around so I can see through. If I can see the floor, I can teleport through. And now I've got a really deep shaft that we can teleport down. And in VR, you really get a really good sense of height when you're looking over these ledges. It does make some people's knees wobble a little. This is a checkpoint area, so if I mess up, there's a bit of platforming action ahead, I can just go back down. Here we're introduced to the fact that if you start to walk out of the area that the camera can see, you get a red mesh and then you can just back off. So you'll notice that this uh, blue rectangle, that shows you where the tracking camera is. And if I actually turn away from that, I get an arrow pointing back towards it. So that together with the grid is helping me keep my orientation in the real room while I'm in VR. Pointing to a beacon is a little different. First, we drop you back to Limbo. From here, we can fold dimensions until the target comes to you. Okay, so you can't just teleport to floors. You can also look at beacons like this one. And this uses a different technique to actually rotate uh, the camera's position in the world. So you'll see my gaze naturally followed the beacon and I ended up lined back up facing the camera again, but we're actually facing a different direction now. So here we need to complete a puzzle to get through the door. And this is one of the puzzle switches to open doors. The green cursor copies your physical movements. Move it over the icons to perform actions. Leaving the eight colored squares resets. 
So the objective there was to use your physical movement to move an icon to to make selections and complete a puzzle by getting the triangle back on top. And what we've done now is we've uh, opened the door up here and I can teleport through. Watch out, Rocky. So we need to avoid this ball. One of the nice things in VR, you get a real sense of scale. Hello, I'm Digby. Droid retrieved, preparing to return to base. So, let's have a quick look at level 2. Let's start the rescue missions before the offspring is lost forever. Be gentle with me. I've had quite a rough week. So we've, <clears throat> so we've got Digby now to help us. And we're going to be able to use him to interact with the environment. So this tip tells you about getting through the energy shield. We can't teleport through that, we're going to have to physically walk through it. You need to reposition yourself before we drop out of limbo. Walk around until the green icon moves onto the word go. Okay, so we're now being repositioned within our grid. And we've now got room to actually physically step through this shield. Use that droid to knock through part of the wall. Carefully. And now we're going to start using Digby to interact with things. So we've got a lot of control of Digby. We can position him. Fire him at targets. I can choose to call him back. Or we can make him hit things from his current location. And if I knock too many bricks out here, that's going to come down on my head, so I think I'll leave it there. Is it just me? Or does no one enjoy that? Target on it. Hit it, rookie. Here it comes. You'll not appreciate it on the camera, but when you're in VR, you're not quite sure if that's going to squash you or not, and it uh, it does make you feel quite nervous. So a tip here: whenever you're trying to avoid things, you keep your eye on it rather than just looking down at the floor. You'll know as soon as you've cleared the obstacle. Look for a beacon to teleport to. So this is a very simple example of some of the perspective type puzzles you're going to have. But you've got to get yourself into the right position to be able to see the way ahead. And further on in the game, that'll include interacting with objects and <clears throat> moving things around to actually see the way ahead as well. So I'll auto complete this puzzle again to save some time. Teleport into the hologram and I'll hack the security door. Watch out! Stay on your grid or dodge those lanes.
I've got pages full of ideas of how I'm going to get you to physically move around, so uh, you're going to be getting lots of variety in the game. That's an incubator. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so that's a quick look through the first two levels of Dimensional. So as, as you go on, it gets more complicated and you eventually learn how to manually rotate and position the play pit as well and you get to see new types of puzzles and power-ups for Digby. So if you get the chance, do, do try and get to play the demo and see what you think of it. And there's a lot more ideas to come yet. <laughs>